A small town police officer in French West Africa defies the law to bring justice to those he deems oppressed. In July 1938, in French West Africa, police officer Lucien Cordier observes a group of boys searching for food in the desert. Suddenly, a solar eclipse plunges the land into temporary darkness, so the man lights a fire by a large tree and calls the group over to warm themselves by the flame. Later, Lucien returns to town when he runs into a man who says he thought it was Judgment Day when the eclipse happened. The next day, Huguette, the policeman's wife, wakes him up and says Vanderbrook is on his way there to see him. Moments later, Vanderbrook, the timber company owner, berates Lucien for failing to oversee the fixing of the dilapidated roofs on his public latrines. The policeman explains that since the man owns the structures, their maintenance is his responsibility. Later that day, Huguette admonishes her husband for allowing the timber company owner to walk all over him. She wants him to stand up to the rich man and tells him to remove the latrines away from their house, but Lucien is too affable to take the matter seriously. Their conversation is interrupted when Nono, whom Huguette claims is her brother, calls the woman over to his room to check under his bed for monsters. So, she heads into his room and closes the door. Seconds later, the suspicious husband opens the bedroom door and sees his wife on the bed cradling Nono. She says the monster under the man's bed gave him a scare, explaining their embrace. The trio return to the dining table, where Nono disrespectfully takes the policeman's rice pudding. On his way to work, Le Peron and Lionelli, owners of the local brothel, intercept Lucien to talk to him about how the new colonel's been cracking down on their business recently. They ask the policeman if he has any prisoners they can use as wait staff at the brothel, but the policeman says the prison is empty since he doesn't arrest anyone unless he has to. Outside the prison, Le Peron spots Lucien's servant, Fetnat, and asks the policeman whether he's available to work at the brothel. Lucien clarifies that the servant is his, but Le Peron knows he's a pushover, so he orders him to bring Fetnat to the brothel tomorrow. Before leaving, Le Peron humiliates Lucien by pushing him over the crouched Lionelli. Later, Mar Caillou beats his wife Rose in the middle of the street because she forgot his birthday. Meanwhile, the policeman pretends he can't hear the commotion and remains seated in the barber's chair. Only when the noise has died down does he search the street for the beaten woman. Eventually, he finds Rose by the side of the road and comforts her. She takes his hand and places it between her legs. He worries that someone might see them, but the woman says at least they'll know someone loves her. Hours later, while the policeman takes a nap by the river, he's awakened by loud gunshots. He catches the brothel owners passing the time shooting the dead bodies floating in the water. Lucien reminds them that what they're doing is against the law and subject to a 50 franc fine. With absolute disrespect for his authority, Le Peron shoves the policeman into the river and Lionelli tosses a paper bill into the water as payment for the fine. Later that day, Lucien takes the train to the city to meet with his superior, Marcel Chavasson, who introduces him to his second in command, Paola. The man shares the problematic people he's had to deal with in his assigned town, including the two brothels owners. When Marcel asks him what he usually does when the pimps give him trouble, Lucien says he normally reprimands them fairly for their crimes. However, his boss teaches him that in order to put the troublemakers in their place, he should double the punishment he hands out. Marcel demonstrates the principle by kicking the policeman through a door twice. He also states that if he were in Lucien's position, he would have dispatched the two pimps a long time ago. At the train station, the policeman thanks Paola and asks him to tell Marcel that he appreciates the boss covering for him. Confused, Paola asks him what he meant by the statement, concerned that the policeman might have taken Marcel's advice seriously. On the journey back, Lucien meets their town's newest teacher, Anne. Later, he helps carry her luggage to her new house, which is right across the school. That night, the policeman confronts the brothel owners by the river. He brandishes his pistol and threatens to shoot them unless they sing a song. The pimps think he's joking and humor his request, but in the middle of the tune, Lucien shoots them dead. Immediately, the police chief drags the bodies into the water. Overwhelmed by what he's done, he lays face down by the river's edge. Later that night, Huguette wakes her husband because of a man urgently banging on their front door. When Lucien opens it, Marcel demands to know if he pushed through with his plan and killed the brothel owners. The policeman feigns ignorance to his superior's relief. He explains that Paolo warned him that Lucien might have taken his advice seriously. Because Marcel can't spend the night at his house, the policeman suggests he stay at the brothel. On the way there, Marcel promises that he'll take care of the pimps in case they cause his friend any more trouble. The next day, Fat Nat reaches the hungover Marcel from the brothel and wheels him back to the police station. There, Lucien asks him what he told the women last night. The boss says that he told them not to worry about the pimps anymore because he'll take care of them. Later that day, they have a few drinks in a bar by the beach where Lucien encourages his friend to keep telling the crowd that he'll put an end to the brothel owner's constant tormenting of the townspeople. 
Marcel asks Lucien about his wife and remarks that his brother-in-law Nono doesn't share a resemblance to Huguette and adds that the policeman might be in for a surprise soon. As they make their way back to the car, the policeman slyly explains that Marcel's bold statements regarding the pimps are going to make him the main suspect in case they end up dead. Confused, Marcel clarifies that he simply promised to reprimand them in the future and when he asks his friend if he killed the pimps, Lucien continues feigning ignorance. Later that day, the policeman stops Mark Caillou from beating a man with a piece of lumber in the market. When Mark Caillou asks if he'll arrest him for beating a person he considers beneath them, Lucien says he won't, but that he could get arrested for uprooting the lumber from the ground, which could lead to a person tripping on the hole. As he's about to leave, he sees Anne looking at him disappointingly. Then, the policeman meets with the priest, who asks him why he has an aversion to arresting people, even those that deserve it. He explains that he is neither brave, honest, nor hardworking, which is probably why his superiors chose him as police chief in the first place. The priest encourages him to take it one step at a time and start by putting Mark Ayu away. So the policeman seeks out Mark Ayu, who's out by the river. He takes the man's gun and, without hesitation, shoots him dead. Then he heads to Rose's house to inform the woman that her husband fell and accidentally shot himself with his own gun. Despite his story, Rose understands that Lucien may have been responsible for Mark Ayu's demise. Relief to be finally free from her abusive spouse, the woman invites Lucien to her bedroom, where they make love. Hours later, they head to the river, where Rose expresses her disdain over her husband's body, before taking his pocket watch with her picture in it. That evening, Rose visits Lucien's home, where she pretends to report that her husband's gone missing, so as to keep up their story that Mark Ayu died in a hunting accident. She tries to play up the act by crying, but Nono's light-hearted comments make her laugh. Later, while the townspeople watch a movie projected on the screen outdoors, a sandstorm drives everyone away, leaving Lucien and Anne all alone. The policeman walks the teacher home, both unaware that Nono is watching them. Later that night, Rose awakens when she hears a noise coming from outside. She follows it to the latrines beside the courtier's home and finds Lucien sawing the floorboards to loosen them up. He giddily tells her to wait for what happens tomorrow morning when Vanderbrook shows up. The next day, Rose wakes the policeman and alerts him of the timber company owner's arrival. They watch from the balcony as the rich man steps into the latrine. Seconds later, the loosened board gives way and Vanderbrook falls into the dank hole underneath. Rose, Lucien, Huguette, and Nono head outside to pour water on the dirty man. He exclaims that he wants the latrines taken down immediately, to Lucien and Huguette's delight. Moments later, Nono implies that he knows who was responsible for Vanderbrook's unfortunate accident by imitating a sawing noise. Angered, the policeman threatens to hurt him if he tells anybody the truth, but Huguette comes between the two men. She tells Rose that she should have seen the murderous look in her husband's eyes. But Rose simply says that Lucien isn't the type of person that would ever hurt anybody. At the dining table, the policeman suggests Rose buy a gun to protect herself in case her husband comes back and tries to harm her, and Huguette agrees. After they purchase a pistol, Lucien teaches the woman how to use it. Minutes later, the policeman sees Nono carrying a ladder and decides to follow him. He sees the man placing the ladder outside Anne's bathroom window to peep on the unsuspecting woman. When she sees Nono, she attacks him and yells at Lucien to lock him up since it's not the first time it's happened. To appease Anne, the policeman tells Nono that he'll pretend to beat him up, or else he'll have to take him to prison. Eventually, the guilty man agrees, but instead of pulling his punches, Lucien beats him up badly. Later that day, he spends some time inside Anne's home, where he confesses that he has feelings for her. That evening, the policeman takes Rose back to her house. Hours later, Rose awakens when she hears a noise outside. She opens the front door and jumps back in horror when she sees her husband's body in the doorway. She and Lucien search for the person who dragged Mark Ayu's body back to the house and spot the man's servant, Friday, about to leave. They stop him and the woman starts beating him up, saying that he should have left the body where it was. She absentmindedly reveals that Lucien killed her husband, which the servant hears. To calm her down, the policeman tells her to return to the house while he speaks to the servant. Friday promises not to tell anybody what he saw or heard, so Lucien asks him to help bury the body. Inside the house, Lucien tells Rose that the best thing to do is to dispose of the servant, since he knows he killed Mark Ayu. So, the policeman and Friday take the corpse to a deserted area. After explaining why he must die, given the situation, Lucien shoots the servant with Mark Ayu's gun. The next day, Colonel Tramichel and his men knock on Rose's door to inform her that they found her husband and his servant's bodies. The woman feigns shock when she receives the news. 
Later, Lucien is escorted to Rose's house to help with the case. Rose theorizes that Friday shot her husband as revenge for his beating the other day, and Mark Ayu got a hold of the gun before he perished. With the policemen agreeing that this might have been the most probable explanation, Tremichel and his men leave. Soon, Rose and Lucien return to his home, where Huguette offers to lend the woman a black dress and veil to wear for the funeral. After the meal, the widow and the policemen think they're all alone, but Nono witnesses them share a kiss. He calls for Huguette to tell on them, but the pair accuse the man of lying, which the wife believes, much to Nono's annoyance. After the funeral, the group is surprised to meet a man who looks exactly like the brothel owner Le Perron. It turns out it's his brother, Warrant Officer George Le Perron, who's there to investigate his brother's whereabouts. He believes that Lucien knows who killed Le Perron and believes it could have been Marcel Chavasson. Later, Lucien takes him to the riverside where the pimps often like to hang out. With no evidence or clues to go by regarding his brother's disappearance, the warrant officer decides to take the train back to the city. That evening, the policeman visits Anne, where the woman asks him if he was with Rose when Mark Caillou was shot. The man pretends like he doesn't remember, so the woman says that she just thinks Mark Caillou dying was the best thing that could have happened to Rose. When she tries to approach the man, he turns her away and says that every time he pities someone, it always ends badly for him and the other person. Later, he stops by Anne's classroom and leaves a message on her chalkboard. The next day, the teacher is surprised to find God told me to kill them, I wasn't sure. Jesus Christ, written on her board. In the Cordier home, Huguette leaves for the hairdresser, leaving Lucien and Nono behind. When Nono brings up the fact that he can always tell Huguette about the true nature of the policeman's relationship with the widow, Lucien snaps and ransacks his wife's bedroom, taking all her money with him. He heads to Rose's house when he contemplates running away with the woman, but changes his mind. Aware that his wife and Nono will be there any minute, he heads out of the house and hides his bicycle behind a shed. Soon, the pair arrives and Huguette asks Rose if she's seen her husband today, and the widow insists she hasn't. However, the policeman's wife spots her husband's hat on the table and knows the widow is lying, so she demands that she return the money Lucien stole. She says she was the one who saved up the money to return to France, and that she didn't endure 15 years of marriage just for Rose to run away with the cash. Huguette orders Nono, whom she reveals is actually her lover, not her brother, to assault the widow to force her to tell them where the money is. The man slaps Rose and Huguette kicks her while she's down. Eventually, the widow is able to run back to her bedroom. She grabs the pistol from her bedside table and shoots the couple. Outside, Lucien hears the gunshots but remains frozen by the shed. Nono stands up slowly and walks out of the room and Rose watches him with a smile on her face. The man stumbles his way outside where Lucien watches him fall to the ground. Suddenly, the policeman sees Tramichel and his men make their way to the house. They've come to spread the news that war has been declared. So Lucien says he heard the news and tells the colonel and his men to head back to town, which they do. While the entire town is in chaos after the news of the coming war, Rose runs to Lucien and tells him what happened. He admits that he heard everything, so she asks him why he never stopped her. The policeman says that it wasn't his place to intervene, and all he could do was allow her to act according to her true nature. Later, she begs him to help her resolve the situation, but he indifferently tells her that all the authorities will find at the crime scene are her fingerprints and her pistol. He suggests she take some of his money and run away, and adds that she can always sell her body to make money. Bothered by his apathy, she expresses her anger and threatens to take her down with him if she ever gets caught. After she calms down and realizes fleeing is her only choice, Lucien takes Rose to the docks. There, she tells the man that he's tried to justify all the evil things he's done in his life, even though he admits that he wonders whether he truly is a good man without an evil bone in his body. The incensed woman wishes him nothing but the worst fate and slaps him. That night, Lucien dances with Anne and expresses the profound loneliness and alienation he feels. He implies that he's no longer capable of love and that she deserves better than to try and love him. The next day, Lucien sits by a large tree in the desert and holds his pistol while in deep contemplation. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.